Hello and welcome to the Women's Wellness Podcast. My name is Amy and I'm your host. And today is another one of the Frequently Asked Questions videos. Um, so I am doing a series of Frequently Asked Questions and this is to help you just to have a quick answer rather than listening to a full episode. So these are few minutes long, up to 10 minutes at the most. If you do have any further questions, you can get in touch with me through my website. You can book a free call or you can join our Facebook group and ask further questions in that group. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, then you will get notified when I upload further episodes. So today's topic, today's question is, how do the pelvic floor muscles get weak? This one might be a bit longer because a few things can affect the pelvic floor muscles. Number one, and the one that people think of most, is pregnancy and childbirth. So they can cause the pelvic floor muscles to get weak. If you imagine your pelvic floor muscles, if I am putting my hands and making a diamond with my hands, for those of you who are listening audio only and if you want to make a diamond with your hands you can see that th that whole area is essentially the size of a baby's head it's essentially the size of the base of your pelvis and that vacant space that you can see through your hands is full of muscle lots of different muscle it's not all just one muscle and they work in different directions and they help to support your organs or support a growing baby. So even if you've had a C-section, your baby, when it's growing, is kicking and bouncing and putting weight on the pelvic floor muscles. Especially if, like during childbirth, the baby is then going down through the vaginal canal, everything is stretching inside and out to get to that size so the baby's head can fit through that gap, okay? So there's a lot of trauma going on with childbirth, a lot of stretching, a lot of, um, yeah, weakness of the pelvic floor because it's got to be able to relax. The pelvic floor that works well needs to be able to relax and contract to do its job properly. And during childbirth, it's going to relax, it's going to stretch and hormones do help with that also so pregnancy and childbirth is the first one now if you have a c-section you're not exempt you may have not had that pushing of the pelvic floor muscles and pushing and laboring but having surgery through your abdominal muscles they are linked everything in your body is linked there's no distinct line for those again who are watching from my neck to my shoulder it's a smooth line. The muscles kind of talk to each other and overlap. So if you do this, lift your shoulder, notice how my, I can shrug and do that. Everything's talking together to lift my shoulder up, okay? Um, same with the pelvic floor muscles. They're not in isolation. They're in the base, but then they're going up the sides to talk to your back muscles, to talk to your front muscles, your abdominal muscles. So if you had a C-section, that can affect how you support yourself and what your pelvic floor muscles do to help with support and getting up and about again after surgery. The next thing that can cause pelvic floor weakness is so other surgery or injury. Say if you have had a hysterectomy or you have had a prolapse or if you've broken your tailbone all of these things they can affect how the pelvic floor works you might have tightness in one place weakness in another and yeah it's not very happy it's not going to work very well and the same with um, cancers and anything that requires hormonal treatment if your hormones are going to affect how your muscles function as well so, um, yeah, surgery, injury, and anything that 
requires hormonal medication can affect how your muscles function. Um, lifting heavy weights is the next one. Lifting heavy weights, um, lifting if you're a carer, lifting a child constantly or carrying a child, lifting an adult quite often if you're caring for an adult, um, carrying your shopping or lifting heavy at the gym regularly. If this is more to do with breath management, because if you are lifting something heavy and if you've ever been to the gym or you've lifted something heavy and you've accidentally passed wind or leaked urine, it's not a badge of honor. It is a sign of weakness. So by going <gasps> to brace yourself to pick something up, it is going to push down the pelvic floor and over time that pushing down is going to put those muscles on a stretch. And if something's being stretched for a long time, it's going to start losing its strength, losing its elasticity, and it's going to be a bit lax. And that's when you get more leaks more often. So these things can only really get worse if you don't address it. If you have surgery to fix the pelvic floor muscles and you don't address the underlying cause, i.e. how you're lifting, then over time, those muscles are gonna get stretched again. It's, you're gonna get back to square one anyway. So breath management is key. This kind of brings me on to so obesity. If you're carrying so excess weight, again, that is a lot of pressure bearing down on the pelvic floor. If you've got more mass, the pelvic floor has got to support more mass. Okay, makes sense. That is what can cause pressure on the pelvic floor over time again with the stretching and the trying to hold everything up. It's going to stretch, it's going to weaken, it's going to um, cause dysfunction. And last but not least, I've probably missed some, but this is one that I like to mention as well is anyone who is kind of hypermobile. If you're already quite stretchy and you're able and quite flexible, the muscles are going to stretch and be a bit more flexible too. So that can cause weakness. Um, and I think that was everything. So if we go back through them, pregnancy um, and childbirth, surgery, injury, excess weight, um, poor breath management when lifting, uh, lifting a lot of heavy weights and um, hypermobility. Also, if you're sitting at a desk job quite a bit, the pressure on the pelvic floor muscles and how you sit and your posture can affect, and also aging. So I did mention with cancer treatments and things that require hormone therapy, if you are going through menopause and your estrogen levels are dropping off the face of a cliff, that is going to affect the suppleness and the elasticity of the pelvic floor muscles. So how can we overcome this? Because now I've told you all this, you're probably a bit like, oh, well, gee, thanks, Amy. I'm just gonna go sit in the corner and cry now. There is hope, there is hope. And the first thing that I always recommend to people is to see a pelvic floor physiotherapist because they are eyes on the inside. They can check what everything is like. They can do internal checkups and they can measure. So they will get you to kind of, to squeeze and they will measure and they will tell you to relax and they'll tell you to bear down and all of those things. And they'll be able to tell and tell you how you're doing and give you some advice, give you some exercises to help. If you would like help beyond that, once you know where your pelvic floor muscles are and how to connect, please get in touch with me. I offer a free 30 minute call so I can answer any questions. And even if you don't work with me, I can always point you in the right direction as well. So thank you for listening to this. I hope it answered that question. This was a little bit longer than our usual frequently asked questions. But if you do subscribe to this channel, you will get notified when I answer any more questions 
And if you do have any questions that I haven't covered yet, then please comment below this video or send me an email. It's info at connecthealth.fitness or you can um, join our free Facebook group. I'll post all these links in the show notes and you can ask any questions in there. So have a great day. I hope that's helped and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to the Women's Wellness Podcast. For links and show notes, please visit www.connecthealth.fitness forward slash podcast. I would love for you to subscribe to the channel so you get notified when we release our next episode and please share with anyone who you think might benefit. Thank you again. I look forward to seeing you soon.